Charlie Simon's here with Do Not Talk, talking about two things you're never supposed to talk about, religion and politics. And I'm here with a man who was uh, at the forefront of the fight to save this state that uh, I'm a native Californian. How about you? Well, yeah, I was actually born in Pennsylvania, and just a couple months later, we moved out to California, so I've been out here all my life, except yeah. for two months. <laughs> uh, it's one of those places that everybody wants to come to, um, but now I've seen such a shift and such a change and such a dramatic uh, bit of, uh, uh, of tyrannical rule from the people that we are electing and putting in these positions of power that has become so overwhelming that I've had a lot of friends move. They've left. And I'm a little bit more stubborn than that. Yeah. Well, so am I. I'm not going to leave. And uh, we have a motto in the New California State Movement um, that we developed in July of 2018 called Stand Your Ground. It's a Marine Corps thing. My dad was a Marine. My father-in-law was a Marine. And they said, when time gets tough, stand your ground. And uh, that's what we're doing here. Times are tough and people want us to leave, but you know, for all the wrong reasons. You know, they want to take over our country. They want to take over certainly California. And we're saying, no, this is our state. And uh, we're going to create a new state actually to double stop it. So we'll have an additional state to stand in their way and prevent them from taking us over. And that's exactly what they're trying to do is take us over as a country. Well, is there any time in the history of the United States of America that a state has split like that? Yeah. It's, he uh, says knowing the answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, there's been a lot of state splits. There's actually been doing the state split that we've done. There's been four of them. We'd actually be the fifth one, technically. Um, but, you know, if you talk to West Virginia, they were the first one, but they were the third one, really. Everybody's got their argument as to what number they're in. We would technically be the fifth one to do this. And, of course, the idea of statehood, it's happened 50 times already, either by bills or by territory or by state splits. Which it means that uh, you can have a state split. It's, it's okay. Um, and it has been done many, many times. And it's part of our growing history as an America that we should be growing every every few years to create a new state. We get stronger in that process. We are a, uh, a just your absolutely stereotypical example of uh, a state where it have, has huge, dense populated areas, densely populated areas that are being overly uh, represented uh, by the state government. And uh, that's by design. And so the rest of the state is kind of like, um, beholden to what the, what what the relatively few when you're looking at size but the population is so much more dense we, can, we how do we fight against that and what's the representation right now in the state of california well, it, it, you're, it, the state of california is divided up in two population groups one uh it's about 40 million people you've heard that before it's actually less than that right now but around 40 million and 20 million live in the highly urbanized areas of Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Sacramento. The rest of it, all 20 million, live uh, in the rural areas of California, which is about 90% of the land mass. And the representation, though, goes, uh, unfortunately, uh, with the densely populated areas. That's constitutionally as it's not supposed to be, but it was a decision that was made in Reynolds versus Sims in 1964 that got rid of senators as representing their, their counties and it would represent populations based upon a district that they would, do, they would drive, that they would design. And of course that's lent itself to the uh, highly densely populated areas having more representation by senators than by... Uh, Give me an example. Well, Los Angeles. So I'll give you an example. I mean, how many senators are there? There's only 40 senators in California, okay. and, and that was by the original design, the original Constitution of California. They started setting up districts because they weren't really too sure about the, the county line situation, and then every group has 40, and they should have. But California remained an outlier after 1879 when they changed and modified the Constitution. So they, they stuck with the 40. And then, uh, of course, they started growing more counties. And then the last county that I think was the last one to grow in was Orange County. It grew away from uh, Los Angeles in the 1950s. But, it, you know, under ideal circumstances, as the Constitution would have it, every county should have been assigned one. It never was. So um, they went to court in 1964 with the idea that um, there was lack of representation. Uh, the people weren't getting the proper representation in the state level, so that was the theory. And so they decided, well, counties should not be represented by a senator. 
the senator should be representing populations. Very similar to what the House, the, the Assembly does, or a House of Representatives does, it represents people by population. And uh, so basically what you have now is a unicameral situation where Whereas before with senators, they were representing these counties and all the things that go on in the county, all the businesses that and things that a county is involved in, resources, you know, um, legal situations, education, such, all that is represented by a senator. And that went away in 1964 when the, the court decided that senators in states should represent people. And of course, ever since then, the lack of representation for the rural areas in particular uh, is unbalanced. They don't have the same representation. They are not standing on the same footage as a population base, let's say, out of Los Angeles County. So you have Lake County, as an example, uh, where you have this county, um, El Dorado or Placer County, uh, which is very rural. Uh, then they're underrepresented because they don't really have a given senator representing each one of the counties. And out of the 40 senators, and these are the ones who go to Washington, uh, these are the ones who represent us on a national basis. So these are, these scale, are the right? state senators. State senators, okay. We only have two senators. Every state has two senators. Right. And that was so that the senators could, be, they could form a Senate. See, this discussion happened in the 1787 to 89 Constitutional Convention because they wanted three branches of government, which they set up, and they set up a legislature, executive, and judiciary, and then they had a House of Representatives in the legislature, and so they, they figured, well, that's really cool. Uh, these people will represent the interests of their states because of the people, the whole population. And so then finally, uh, I think it was Vermont or maybe it was South Carolina, said, you know, our population is different than New York. And New York will automatically get, let's say, 50 members of the House of Representatives, and we'll only get two. So when we go to vote on something and New York doesn't like what we want, we'll never get anything we want. So they said there has to be parity. Benjamin Franklin actually brought this up, that there's got to be some way to get parity and control over the urges of the masses, basically, because else the masses and the people who would have the most votes, a dictatorship would exist. So they said, well, let's try the states and look at the states. So they decided that states would have rights and that they decided that there would be a Senate, the two senators for each state, regardless of population. And that would balance out the problem on the House of Representatives side. And what that would mean is that a state could have equal power in a Senate as the members of the House of Representation. And so the Senate is equal powered. That's why you saw, as an example, during the impeachment, Nancy Pelosi was representing the people. The Senate, by Mitch McConnell, was representing all the states. And the senators, Mitch McConnell, just wouldn't listen to everything that Nancy Pelosi was bringing his way. He, he said, no, I'm not going to do these things you want, because he could, because he had the same power as her, and she wanted to usurp his power. We could all see that happening right there. But uh, he said no to that. That was, uh, that, was a, a, that and getting uh, the approval, the judges approved, were, were two great things that Mitch McConnell did. Right. Uh, other than that, though, it's been it's been downhill. <laughs> Pretty hit and miss, <laughs> yeah. hasn't it? Yeah, but he, you know, he made a commitment. I I was following Mitch McConnell back in. Uh, I think he took the office again back in 1994 after uh, the years of Obama, and uh, because that was when Obama was running roughshod over the Senate, and the, so M Mitch McConnell took back. I think it was in 1994, the Senate. And he said at the time that we're going to restore a deliberative body back to the Senate. We're not going to hurry up and, and pass things on the urges of the House or the President. And uh, he stood his ground then. So there's yeah. been three things that he did. Yeah. But now let's don't talk about the other things because no. that'll get me going. Right. Uh, but uh, no, the, the uh, California <laughs> State Legislature really has devolved itself into a dictatorship or a democracy. Right. As we know. It, it is, you threw out a number. Just I got to hear Paul speak uh, today, and he was very gracious to give me this interview after the, after he's already you know spent an hour talking to a crowd, a room full of people. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, but you threw out a, a statistic about these 40 senators and how many of them actually represent these big, heavily populated areas, right. comparatively speaking to the rest of us. Well, when they took the Senate or they took the county sovereign areas away from the senators, um, they put them into districts based upon population. So as an example, if you take a look at the map of New California behind us and you look at all the red area, um, Brian Daly who's in dis Senate District Number 1, he represents 11 counties, 
and he tips all the way down into the Bay Area to make up his population base, you know, so he gets a piece of that, but he represents 11 counties. It's impossible for one senator to represent 11 counties because look at the jurisdictional things they have to represent. Mm-hmm. They, he represents 11 district attorneys now. He represents 11 county boards now. And some of those are divided up with other senators. That's the thing. Some of these counties have been divided up. So it's really hard to get any kind of a representation at that level into the state representatives. They have been railroading the uh, Republican Party uh, very effectively. They have a supermajority now. You have uh, pigs like Senator Scott Weiner from San Francisco. Uh, he's going to be a senator for life because there, there's uh, he's, he's going to be another Nancy Pelosi, another Dianne Feinstein That's right. because he's got a population base that's going to continue to put a swine like that back into that tremendous position of power. But because the, they have a super majority, we got no chance that's here. That's right. That's exactly right. And that, when in New California's form, we're going to challenge Reynolds versus Sims. Now, right now, when we've created the state, we automatically assigned a senator to each county. So all 56 counties in New California has a senator right now. And uh, that was our appointment. We can do that and when we start to model and make the, make the state. Um, and we also have appointed uh, members of our assembly to, the, uh, how, to the, each one of the counties. So the counties are being represented right now in New California, where they're not in old California. All of our business is shaped around that now in their legislature, uh, which is the way it should be. This is a Republican form of government, and California does not offer a Republican form of government anymore. That's one of the first things that the Constitution of the United States says a state has to do. And so does the United States have to offer this as a Republican form of government, freedom from invasion and freedom from domestic violence. And right now, none of that's being protected against us uh, in California. They're not providing that at all. None of them. As a matter of fact, um, they all, Canada seems to be at this point the proving ground. You know, the, for example, there's a gun grab going on there oh, yeah. that the media is ignoring right now that is heart wrenching gun grab going on in Canada and uh, that's coming here isn't it yeah they're, they're attending if it works there it's going to come here right and, uh, but it's going to be a little bit of a struggle for them because you have judges really that are um, like the judge down in San Diego Benitez um, he is really a Clinton appointee. He's really taken a hard line against the governor and against any new gun laws, which is a relief for California. But in New California, uh, the gun laws that are, that apply in California won't apply to us because we're going to be a constitutional carry state. So it's just kind of if you want to buy a gun in the morning and take it home that afternoon or that day, you can. You know, it's, it's real simple. We're just going to ask for the federal check. That's it. Some of those checks can be done in 15, 20 minutes. How we'll much? Walk out of the store with a gun. Uh, which is how it is. I used. I lived in Tennessee for a year. Used to be that way in California, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the back, way late back 1800s. In the, no, no. I, I remember uh, going in and getting a gun when I was a young boy with my brother. I got a 22. The NRA has uh, has taken a hardline stance uh, since I've been aware of them going back to you know my high school days, uh, but I grew up you know Bakersfield and we all we, I, I was shooting when I was like yeah. eleven, uh, but uh, there there's a um, there's a real uh, obvious effort to disarm uh, right. the population and as California goes, so goes the rest of the That's nation. Uh, so that is coming here and it is going to happen as long as they have the super majority. Here's why I bring all this up though. It's so overwhelming at this point, Paul Preston from New California. It is so overwhelming at this point I don't see a light at the end of California's tunnel. Mm -mm. And I am now shifting my thinking that maybe I need to get out too, because I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. We got uh, millions who have streamed across the border and we're a sanctuary state. And uh, they're they're already voting now because of the motor voter law that Jerry Brown passed. Right, there's no- Illegals are. There's no moderation, there's no checking of identities or anything like that. But see, that's the whole idea is that when uh, we first started all this that everybody was moving and of course the state at the time was in denial that anybody was moving they they wanted to keep it on that was always a big clue to me but i knew that people were moving and so um i knew that there's something nefarious going on there but and, and the state was being nefarious very much so 
Uh, then, of course, businesses and big businesses like Boeing started to leave, and of course, that was from the overregulation. So, uh, rather than to take the attitude that we can modify or change or make better the current constitutional state, uh, we looked at what the Constitution provided. And we found it in Article 4, Section 3 of the Constitution, where if you want to form a state from a pre-existing state, then you have to get the permission of that state and then move on to Congress. And I thought to myself, that's kind of an odd one, because if you're really happy with your state, why would you want to make a new state, you know? And then I realized that's just some clever wordsmithing by the Founding Fathers. And so I said, nobody's trying to make a new state out of Florida. No. Because they have representative government. That's right. They have a Republican form of government. Yeah. And so it was really meant for these moments. And so that's when I said to myself, well, let's do this. You know, and I started getting involved in the Jefferson movement and some other movements. But I knew, uh, being in education, I saw the trend towards totalitarianism back in the 90s. This is the only out, as far as I see it. To everybody who says, I can't leave because I have family obligations or whatever, fill in the blank. We all have our reasons why we want to stay in California. A lot of it is because we're born and raised here and we love it. Uh, But it it could be so much as we're, we're staying here because myself... I have an elderly mom. There right. is no one else to help her. Right. That's part of my every week or she two likes weeks. California, right? Yeah, okay, well, okay, absolutely. Well. <laughs> uh, and so I can't leave as long as you know she's still kicking it. Uh, I, I'm here. Right. Uh, that's my obligation. So if I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel for the state of California at this point, where I see that there has been a supermajority that has, in many villainous ways, illegally taken over control. Of a, uh, 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 and squelched any kind of representative form of government, uh, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. This is it. Right. This if is I want to stay here because I love the weather, whatever, uh, you know, this is it. It's New California. We, we are the only thing that will save this state and this nation. And I mean that in all sincerity, especially now with more recent events, and people are starting to realize that we offer a constitutional form of government that's uh, that's sta- that's what the founding fathers wanted. Uh, we will uh, we will have a, we do now have a republican form of government, and uh, we will guarantee the freedom of invasion. We won't be tolerating any of this stuff. Uh, we won't be inviting them in by indi- inducements through the California DMV and voting and all this other stuff, or uh, payments, you know, for uh, welfare. We just won't be doing that. And uh, the, the the proof is in the pudding with us, and that. We've declared ourselves independent, just like the Constitution wants us to do. We laid down 190 grievances or complaints against the state of California. Every Tuesday, we read on the Superior Court buildings of the state of the uh, capital or the uh, county uh, Superior Courts. And then uh, we've had 12 constitutional conventions. We've been building the Constitution on the conventions. And uh, we've sent representatives to the uh, the Congress, and we delivered our paperwork for statehood. And uh, we're going to continue to follow up. I know there's chaos right now in the House, but we'll continue to send our representatives. We're looking at sending at least 10 when everything is fully done. Uh, And we're designating them as um, delegates representatives to the House of Representatives from New California. Just because we're legally able to do all of these things doesn't mean they're going to recognize any of it, and the media, of course, is going to shut it down or ignore it completely. I I think that what will happen, the financial things and the collapse of California financially and the rest of the nation is going to weigh heavily on everybody's minds. And because we will have a clean constitution, a clean credit score, because right now California has failed in the last three years to give uh, the auditable financials uh, to the federal government and to us, we haven't seen those. It's like, you know, why are they hiding their auditable financials. We're the only state in the union that's done that. Um, you know, there's so many other things as the reason why, you know, the education system is collapsing on itself, the immigration, everything that's been going wrong with California, which has been by design, I believe, is leading them into us and the people into us. And we're starting to see it. People are now waking up, awakened, and they're going, oh my God, this is, there's got to be some out. You know, they, they want to stay. They're getting desperate. And Many of them are now coming back to us and going, you know, we heard about you, and our, our, we're swelling with people joining right now. And that's going to be a, a trend that's going to continue probably indefinitely until we become a state. And then it'll really take off because people will want the lower taxes. They'll want the water. The energy. You know, we have communities in California right now that don't have any running water. And that's by that's by design. I'm sorry. They're, the, 
DW Warren and the, and the state government is punishing these people. Uh, for I, the I five corridor, where the right. uh, lifelong, semi multi generational farmers along there who had, right. who had blazed that trail long before there was an Interstate Five, uh, raising cattle, raising crops, and and getting water. And there's a whole there's a whole delta. Uh, an irrigation system that goes through there dried up all over a fish that's not even native that's right. to the delta. The delta smelt um, and dried up this water to preserve a freaking fish that nobody even knows what it does and why it's there. Yep. How it got there, by the way. I, not native, again. Uh, I really think that that has been a land grab on the part of the government oh, yeah. and Chinese government in particular. The globalists want California. This is the prize. It's a. Uh, it's got everything on the, this part of the planet and all the planet. Everything you can imagine, from gold to water to the ability to grow crops and so on. And you know that you mentioned the Central Valley and San Joaquin Valley and Sacramento County. You know the way we do farming and ranching in California is California style. It's unique, and it's it's taken an evolution that um, you know from all the people who came out during the Dust Bowl. I wanted to settle and, and, and they, they stood their ground. They and they learned out, their lesson about learned, how to protect that, topsoil. That's exactly right. Yeah. And they know how to do, I'm telling you, I'm so proud um, of the farmers and the great work that they do. And, you, know, you fly over and you see all these different patches of, of farmland and you realize most of those patches are owned by individual farming families right. and they've been here since the 1930s. You know, um, they settled, they stood their ground, and they've, especially when you get down in towards Bakersfield and, you know, how precious water is down there, mm -hmm. which, by the way, they've been starved out of water. They should, uh, they had the Friant uh, reconveyance, but much of that reconveyance system is, is really needs a lot of work. Um, Donald Trump came in and gave them some money for it, and nobody's helped him out with the state, of course, but we intend to come in and build six more dams. The, the dams are already approved. They've been around for a long time as approved, and uh, we're going to build the reservoirs, and then we're going to build hydroelectric around that. This is all huge. Logistically, right. this is a nightmare. No, it, it's, Think about law enforcement. But it's, well, that's another thing. We are partnering with military. law enforcement and military. We're going to have a ca new California military department? Well, they'll, they'll be a National Guard, you know, and there'll be a state militia and then things like that. Uh, we're taking a long look at what we're doing with the sheriffs. We're very happy with the sheriffs that we've worked with already. We've worked with numerous sheriffs, constitutional sheriffs in California, who realize that they are constitutional sheriffs, which is another thing. Uh, wait, may wait. I, though? May I? Well, See, I had this discussion with uh, more than one sheriff when I was actually on the radio uh, originally, first right. time I had you right. on my show. Uh, and I asked outright uh, sheriff in a very contentious race at the time, I won't say in which county, uh, are you a constitutional sheriff? Because I believe in the CSPOA, the Constitutional mm -hmm. Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association of America. Uh, I believe that that is right, and they've got a very valid point that we need to wake up to the power given to the sheriff of right. a county by the U.S. Constitution. And sheriffs often don't even know. They don't train That's that right. in law enforcement. So that was what the CSPOA's big push. But he said, when I asked him this question on the air, Oh, yes, I'm constitutional sheriff. I don't know which constitution. Yeah. The state mm -hmm. constitution. And that's, that's a big wrong. Difference. That's a, but that's wrong. He's, he's sworn an oath to office to the federal constitution. Right. And uh, that's wrong. Protect and, and serve. And uh, listen, I have talked to numerous sheriffs up and down the state. I've traveled to all 58 counties. I've spoken in all 58 counties. And I've talked to a good majority of them. And I would say it's 50 50 on those who understand that. And I've enlightened him and said, no, you sworn an oath to the Constitution of the United States and you are a constitutional sheriff. The other enhancement, which the California State Constitution does say, is that if you are an elected sheriff by your county, you are, quote, in California considered to be a constitutional sheriff. I think it's the only constitution in the nation that actually says that. Well, then how come they say that they answer they their... Don't, their, their uh, here's part of the problem with the California Constitution. If you go back and look at the original one, there's a compact that we entered the state with, and the nation with. Um, they talk about the sheriff in terms of what we would traditionally know. But in 1879, they revamped all that, and they made the, the sheriff answerable to... The, sec the attorney general. Right. There and it that's is. That's not it. That's yeah. not it. And, and, and that's they still, say that the AG is their commander-in-chief. They always in chief. say that. And, and I have to back them up. And I say, don't. 
who'd you swear an oath to office through first? The Constitution. I said, that's your oath of office. I said, the Constitution in California is unconstitutional because you answer to the Constitution first and you're sovereign. It's sovereign if you're elected by the, by the people. You're not, your powers dissipate if you're not elected by the people in your county. You're not a sovereign. And that's one of the reasons why uh, George Soros and all these other people are trying to buy out the uh, duly elected sheriff's contracts, not contracts, but their election. What? They'll come in, they'll come in yeah, they'll come in and, and offer the board. Uh, we will uh, pay, uh, give uh, the sheriff, if he wants to retire early, an elected sheriff will give him, say, a hundred thousand dollars bonus, and so they give him a hundred thousand dollar bonus, and the sheriff takes off. Well, at least, like, say, two more years left. There should be an election. It's now the board of supervisors yeah. has that power to appoint. appoint. Now, and of so course, you have a new sheriff that they are friendly to. You got it. Without an election. That you got it. And it's really easy for the cartels to come in and sway those county supervisors or force them into things, and they put pressure on the unelected sheriff. He's unelected. See, the, the elected sheriff is somebody who's answerable only to the citizens, right. not to the board of supervisors. Right. And that's not her. The, that boss, the boss is the people, not the board of supervisors. We saw that happen in Placer County, didn't yes. we? Yes. Well, you've seen it in many counties, and we pointed it out in every county that's happened. And we've, we've told the constitutional sheriffs, we told the unconstitutional sheriffs. In fact, we supported a couple of them, well, our people did. We, we can't support a candidate, but uh, we were telling people that the avenue for this sheriff is to be elected. And if he wants to be elected, he should be. But, you know, if he doesn't want to be elected, he wants to continue on with that, then you're going to have an unconstitutional sheriff. He does know you have no authority over jurisdiction as we the people would. They're answerable to the people who hire him, and that's the Board of Supervisors. Now, a Board of Supervisor does not represent the entire county. He's only got a segment, a segment. of the county. Right. right? And so their impact is, is its powers dissipate. So it would be a challenge for him to say that, yes, I'm the sheriff of this county, but if the federal government comes in and says you're not a sovereign, he's going to have to back down. See, like D'Agostini here, he didn't back down from the feds. El Dorado County yeah. the sheriff who just retired last yeah. year. He didn't back down from the feds, and he said, no, I am elected. Every person in this county wants well, me to do this. Guy. You're out of here. Yeah. And so, uh, Jeff Lykoff, I think, has been doing a really good he's, job. He's, he's, he's followed in his footsteps, and yeah. he's done a very, very good job. Yeah. And uh, he's going to continue to do a good job. And there's other sheriffs now who are, are, get this. And I'm not going to mention any of them, but um, it's pretty empowering to see them be empowered. It is exciting. And we just explained it to them the way, I just explained it. Very exciting. And that, you know, you're not empowered, you have to be empowered uh, by the people. The people are the ones that um, tell, are your boss and you have to be answerable to them. And once they understand that, they understand that the constitution in, of California is no good. It doesn't apply to them in that regard. And so they, they ignore it. I mean, that's really what's going to happen, is they're ignoring bad, bad constitutionality. And by the way, the Constitution of 1879, which is what they're adhering to, is not the definitive Constitution of California. That's the one that was the original compact that was formed with the federal government and the state, that there will always be in perpetuity a state within the United States. That goes on forever, regardless of what California wants to do. California adopted which is unconstitutional, adopted this uh, Constitution in 1879, which they've changed over 900 times since then to now. And uh, that's why we have a democracy here. We don't have a republic. And the first priority in the Constitution is that the federal government has to provide for a Republican form of government. And we don't have that. That's why it's a mess. And that's why we step in as New Cal. We, the people, have the authority by way of the Declaration of Independence and the Declaration and the Constitution to do this. So we're just doing what we should be doing as citizens. After hearing you speak for an hour, I had like a whole bevy of questions and things I wanted. Yeah. I was like, I just want to ask him these things. So he'll say it all over again because it was so fascinating and very powerful. Uh, we've covered none of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to have you on again Sure But sure. Uh, real quick I want We're going to let you know How to get a hold of New California How to get involved How to find out more But in the, I do have one question for you I don't know if you can see the map from here But it, instead of how it used to be State of Jefferson Which literally cut the, the state in half And I thought That's an easy sell People will get that Right Understand that 
It's not like that. Mm -hmm. You have what uh, Paul affectionately and lovingly calls pus pockets uh, uh, that are real. <laughs> not me. That was my chief of staff. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. I thought that was you. Okay, all <laughs> no, right. I just laughed at it. <laughs> uh, and, and they're going to be isolated. So you're going to have like Bay Area. You're still California. You're going to have Sacramento right. area. You're still California. Los Angeles, you're California. The rest of us are new California. That's a hard sell. I mean, just the, you are now leaving the state of California. You're now entering the new state, new California. Well, you know, if you uh, want to ease your mind on that, there's always Southwest Airlines to keep you in touch with people in California. <laughs> okay. And uh, it's not unusual for states to, uh, to be non-contiguous like this because you have several already. Uh, Look at Hawaii, you have water. Uh, look at Michigan, you have l water and land. Of course, I pray this happens. Minnesota. I pray this happens. Well, no, no, no. You, you understand? It is happening. Good. Right now. Okay. It's happening before your very eyes. Okay, and, good. Uh, we That's would exciting. not be in Congress right now if it hasn't been happening. See? Yeah. And so the proof is that we do have paperwork in Congress. Now, whether or not they're going to take things up, that. What are they taking up right now anyway? <laughs> you know, yeah. This is like crazy land, but we're here now, and we're ready to go. Uh, we have our legislature's up and running, and they're doing a fine job. And so we have a majority, barely. Well, I mean, we can't even get Jim Jordan as Speaker of the House, but all right. Well, and that's, yeah, that's questionable what's going on there. That's the big thing. But as far as New California's legislature, um, they're up and running and functional as a Republican form of government, even though we haven't had an election, but on an appointed basis. This is what you do when you form a new state, is you run on appointments like this, and then you step off and do the elections later on, which we will do an election, but not with this current election system. It's no. not constitutional what they're doing with this no. election. System. Paper ballots. How about Paper that? Actually showing an ID to get your ballot. How yep. about that? Yep, that would be it. That would be it. Son of a gun. Uh, the best thing you can do is not just go, hey, that sounds good. Uh, I sure hope it happens. Let me know. That, no. that, that's the, I meant the worst thing you could do. But the best thing you can do is actually get educated about it. Where do we find you? Well, you can go to newcaliforniastate.com, newcaliforniastate.com, and there's a whole wide range of things you can check into on the face of the website there. Um, best thing to do is to hit the button that says join now <laughs> and join up, and we'll get in touch with you. Put your county information in. We'll put you in touch with your county representative. We're really having a big push now because it's time that the foot soldiers of California and New California really step up. It's not a campaign. It's not a political campaign. It kind of feels like it, you know, but um, we're about making a new state. So it's a whole different operation, a whole different um, set of features about it. But we still have to do the things about informing people, getting involved with the communities, you know, and things like that, like you would with a somewhat of a political campaign, but this is more in depth. You know, our people stay involved and engage. We have people running for office now in some places and uh we didn't put them up to that but they just felt compelled to do that and they think like new cal and they're going to support new california when they're there they've told us already that's one of the reasons they're running because they want to be prepared and in those seats when uh, new california is formed and uh, yeah i can't stop them no no don't do that that's against the rules um there's the rules are pretty wide open on all these things and uh, we've been you know, very fortunate that we've been fine you know we we found the right combination of what the Founding Fathers designed. And it's been done before. This is not... This, this has been it, done before. It's been done before. We'd be the fifth. That's right. And it would be state number 51. That's right. We're going to have to add a star to the flag. Uh, I want to have you on again. And you know I'm a delegate with the California GOP. Ooh, congratulations. How, oh, really? How's that so? working out for you? Is that a congratulations? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well that's, uh, a, that's somewhat sarcastic, but how's I have it working been, out for I've you? I've been to two of their conventions now in Sacramento and the other one down in Anaheim. And uh, I am telling everyone, stop giving your money to the California GOP. Right. Period. Stop giving your money to the national GOP, as a matter of fact. Don't. Give your counties, yes, your county central committees, individual candidates, stop, though, giving your money to that state GOP because they are a train wreck. They're yeah. in very bad shape, and I don't, see, I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel there either. So there's so many, and the reason why I bring this up, I've made great friends, people I admire and respect, and I've had on the show. Rebuild California, you right. know, Save California, they all, they all have similar names. Uh, and they're all about, we can take the state of California back. I don't see how at this you point. You cannot put new, new wine, wine into old, old wine skins. skins. Right, um, as Jesus said. They're offering the same old, same old with the same old people. 
How's that going to change California? It's, it's not. not. It's not. It's not. They're not going to change a thing, and they're taking in vast quantities of money. Uh, they're making promises that they, they cannot fulfill. Um, and the only way that they can really do this is to do this with New California. And we're more than happy to work with them. There is going to be California that still has to be dealt with and the things that they have oh, to yeah, do to adjust your constitution. Yeah. And we're happy to work with everybody on that. I was wearing my pin, by the way, at the California GOP convention. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> Guess how many people talked about it and acknowledged it? Yeah. Well, we, Zero. I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> they don't even want to look down. Don't look down. He's wearing a pin. Don't look down. Look yeah, down. I bet they were. But people, the problem is, is you'd be surprised who talks to us from the Cal GOP. You'd be really surprised. Good. That's um, encouraging. Well, it's encouraging from the standpoint that the Cal GOP is going to be missing out on those people's uh, participation. But um, th at some point in time, that's going to be the people of California are going to have to reconcile with the GOP and what they've been up to. And uh, and I think that that time is coming pretty soon. I, I think so. the, the whole dynamic of everything politically uh, in, in the United States is is really going to be challenged right now. But there's one thing that we know. We're we're moving on down the highway. We're not stopping. We're we, we Our ship is sailing, and we're moving on just fine. You have a podcast, and I'm really stupid about promoting other people's oh. podcasts <laughs> instead of my own. But uh, it's a Agenda 21, right? Agenda 21 Radio on Red State Talk Radio and also— Red State R Talk Red Radio? State Talk Radio. Okay. It emanates out of Washington, D.C. We have studios in Northern California, and uh, we get up every morning at six o'clock, actually three a.m. to do the prep work. We also broadcast on Rumble, and we also broadcast on Cloud Hub, Facebook, and uh, I guess it's X now, right? Twitter, Twitter, yeah. Twitter channels, and uh, uh, it's 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 quite challenging. But you know, we get her done. In three and we hours. look for Agenda Twenty One Radio, Agenda Twenty One Radio dot okay. uh, news or a twenty one r dot com if you want to go the simple way. But if you just type in Red State Talk Radio, you can listen to us at 6 a.m. in the morning and go from there. Pacific time. Pacific time, yeah. Pacific. Yeah, yeah. California time. Yeah. Thank you, Paul Preston. Thank you, sir. You're an admirable gentleman uh, and, uh, and, uh, and such too. a scholar on so many levels. Thank you for schooling me about how our own state government works. I'm thinking that all the senators go to Washington, D.C. and all the, I, I am a product of Bakersfield University. <laughs> did you, I'm did, amazed at how... You Bakersfield High School, the Oilers, is that what they are? <laughs> no, the Rebels. The Rebels, South, that's right. South Bakersfield. Yeah. Uh, not Rebels, Rebels anymore, though, because it, that's well... Yeah, shut up. Rebels, right. All right. All right, my friend. Thank you very Thank much. You, More sir. power.